let's get a rocking because we, we want to keep this down to a, a shorter meeting. Um, call to order. And um, I assume all of you have seen um, and had a chance to read the minutes that were given to you. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. If you haven't had a chance, we can wait for you to read them. I've read I read them as well. Janet, did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so basically, I need to have a motion to um, to approve the um, previous minutes from the past meeting. I move. Okay, Candy. I move. A second. Um, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much, ladies. Um, we need to have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Okay, hands were, were good. Moving right along. Um, okay, it's been um, moved and seconded. We've taken a vote. On to the house manager's report. Kathy, handing it right off to you. It's pretty short. Um, April April was pretty quiet. Um, we had three events, um, the club, the board meeting and two facility showings. Um, we did still have a lot of activity in the garden. Um, for um, pictures and stuff, we were out there actually on the 1st of May having a, our first club meeting and uh, had a wedding come over from St. Brain. So there's still lots and lots of photo activity, which we can't keep track of. Um, we have four new revenue generating events. Um, our inquiries are keeping pace um, at 34 for April. And um, five of those were phone and 34 were electronic. And you can see the distribution on the report. Um, we are still getting a lot of leads from um, City of Longmont, The Knot, and Wedding Wire. There's something wrong with those numbers. I'm sitting here looking at them. So I don't know what. I'll figure it out later and send you a revised copy. Okay. Um, we are um, ready to open for clubs and events. Uh, we have two clubs starting back next week. Um, the book club met on the 1st of May, and um, we are busily um, dusting things off and vacuum, vacuuming and cleaning so that we're all ready for that to happen. Pat will be here again tomorrow, and um, I have a few um, little things to do, and then I think we're set to go. Um, we're working really hard in the garden. Um, Grow is out there right now, and Ho and Hope is going to be there in um, in about an hour to to assist. Uh, I think they're actually taking on the roses today because she thinks we're finally fat past the uh, the last frost. So we're going to make our roses all beautiful today, um, and they're getting the beds ready for installation of the annuals, which will hopefully be at the end of next week. Um, provide they're supposed to go in on the twenty first. Um, but it really depends on when we get our delivery. So we're, we're kind of trying to balance not knowing with planning, which is, is always fun. Um, they are mulching the beds and um, they'll finish once the annuals are installed. Um, Terra Care started mowing two weeks ago. The, um, the grass is looking pretty good. Um, the sprinklers are started up, but I don't think they've adjusted them yet. So that's gonna happen really soon. Um, parks charge the sprinklers, um, the fountains uncovered. It's always nice to see that emerge from its uh, winter tarp. And um, we're working on, they removed the broken tree limbs, but we also have a couple of trees that need to actually be trimmed because they have broken branches from the last storm. Um, hopefully we'll have the fountain up and running by the wedding on the 22nd. Um, Karen and I met with um, Jeff, um, last week and Ben and Sue Ellen and talked about the next steps on the grant process. Um, it has come to light since we met the last time that the only person in the city who can sign the grant agreement is the mayor uh, because the mayor is the only person in the city who can sign intergovernmental agreements. So we're going to have to take um, the, the grant application or the intent to apply for the grant to council in July. So we're working on that. Um, we have to get approval <clears throat> so that we can do the August um, deadline for the submission. Um, as I said, most of our clubs are going to be returning in May and June. Um, we did have two clubs that have decided not to come back at all. 
Um, it seems like a lot of our seniors um, have decided that they really don't want to go someplace 20 or 25 days a month. And they're pairing back on their activities. Um, so two of our um, clubs, one of them is a bridge club, an eight person bridge club, and the other one is a five, five or six person um, stitching club are, are not coming back. Um, I do have another club on the hook to uh, fill one of those spots and I'm working with her to figure out when they're actually gonna go to meet and how often it sounds like they may come twice a month. Um, I wanted to take a minute and I don't know if I pulled the, um, uh, we'll talk about the, the COVID updates um, in, uh, under the agenda items. Um, we did have one event cancel and that was um, Courtney Lawrence's um, baby shower. They, um, they still had too many people um, under the current COVID guidelines to have their meeting in the house and the weather wasn't good enough to do it outside. So um, they canceled. Um, we did book a wedding rehearsal for Anne and Carl and that's happening on the 21st. Um, we picked up a very sizable um, celebration of life on June 11th and we're doing the food and the rentals and the uh, public address for that. Um, we also picked up a, another wedding on the 6th of August um, with a wedding drop off on the 5th. That one's just a reception. And we picked up a post wedding brunch in August. So um, things are moving. It's good news. I actually put money in the bank and that's, that's moving in the right direction. Um, wedding sites and services sent us one lead list with 73 leads. Um, 15 of those bounced with bad emails, and so far I haven't gotten any inquiries, but uh, usually they follow later. Um, update on the date for Art Walk. It's going to be September 11th. Um, I'm still working with Elaine at Art Walk to figure out what kind of sponsorship we are going to do so that we can get into the advertising. Um, I'm not willing to spend more money on the sponsorship than we have in the past. Um, typically, we do about a $300 sponsorship, so it looks like we may do a performer sponsorship, um, but she and I are still in discussions on that. So uh, financially, uh, moving on to the financial reports, you'll be happy to know as you look at the spreadsheet that we are in the black, um, and frankly, um, that's pretty unusual for this early in the year, so between COVID and has, as early in the year as it is, I'm very encouraged by the fact that we're actually um, in the black. Um, not by a lot, only by about $1,000, but or actually it's closer to $1,500, but I'll take it. Um, the, uh, we're up to 15 events with 64 attendees for the year, but that's gonna start climbing pretty rapidly now. Um, and we're, we're very anxious to, um, to get people back. Um, as you can see, the April spreadsheet is pretty empty. Um, again, next month, that'll be a lot fuller. Um, moving on to expenses, um, I am working on um, updating some of our printed materials. Um, we have some old websites that are no longer rerouting to the, um, to the new longmontcolorado.gov. So I'm going to reprint um, the, the little... Um, labels for our packets, and I'm gonna reprint our history brochures, which we're out of. And um, I'm working on a couple other things too, just to get things updated. So I have uh, spent a little bit of money this month getting um, some new paper to get that done. Um, we have spent a, a fair amount of money on cleaning supplies because Pat's cleaning like a fiend. Um, he has oiled every piece of wood in the house and um, it looks really, really nice here. Um, I also had to update a bunch of office supplies. Uh, in the process of picking up the things that we purchased for the garden, so we bought rose food and alfalfa, and next month you'll see the fertilizer. Um, we actually did laundry, which I think is exciting because <laughs> we haven't done hardly any laundry in a year. So okay. uh, that's moving on. Um, <laughs> pardon me? TMI. TMI, that's right. <laughs> um, moving on to the Munis report, which is the financial report that looks like this. Um, you'll see that the um, year-to-date revenue um, does not reflect that with what's on the spreadsheet. Um, that's because the um, transfer from the general fund didn't happen in April. I'm sure they'll catch up. So I went ahead and put it in my spreadsheet, but in Munis, it hasn't been entered yet. 
So um, that's the only reason for that. Um, that is about all I've got. Um, I'd like to um, um, go over the letter of intent under old business and Karen can do that. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I know I have a, a quick question. So we talked in, uh, at the last meeting about possibly putting a QR code so, um, on the gate area so people could uh, donate or um, also with the QR codes, we could do a quick um, tour or something. Um, have we gone anywhere with that where we've gone um, more? We're QR still code? working on it. There's some um, technical complexities related to that. And Sue Ellen's actually the one who's working on it. So I don't really have a very good update on that, but she she is absolutely working on that. Um, there's, there's some back end stuff related to collecting the money that's very complex. And so, and we also need to go to Jeff and get approval for doing that. So it's kind of happening in the background, but I don't have an update at this point. Um, so, so it's an issue with um, hooking up with their rev, rev track type of thing? Is that... Yes, it's an issue with programming. Okay. So um, Sue Ellen is working on that. I, I didn't get an update from her and since she's not here today, um, but I, I put it in my notes to get an update for the next meeting. Wonderful. Thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate it. I just, if there's a way that we can um, help with our funding and um, even if it's just a little bit of a trickle, a trickle something, and, and it also helps, um, I'm hoping with our counts. So when you're not there or able to count, um, we can keep an, a better track of numbers without, you know, um, heavy other issues. Anybody else have any questions or concerns that they want to talk to Kathy about on her report? Seeing head shakes, I think we're good. All right, we'll move right along to um, moving on to um, old business um, with the grant update. Karen, do you want to go ahead and, and take it away on, in regards to the grant? Well, in the board packet, you have the letter of intent, the three-page letter of intent. Hopefully, you've all had a chance to um, read through that. Um, and just as an FYI, the packet is loaded up on the um, new PrimeGov site, but I did not load our letter of intent in the public packet because I think that's really our private business. So you guys have it, but it is not, it's not on the public site. I agree because obviously we're not quite ready and until and it's the official document and we're ready to rock and roll definitely. Well, and it's a competitive grant. So honestly, I don't want to give anybody else who's applying for the grant a leg up. So right. that was really my thought process. Yeah, I, I agree. Good. That, is, that is the reason to keep that among us. Not you bet. So does anyone have any questions on the letter of intent? I thought it looked great, but where, where, where is everybody else out? I think it's great. It's well written. I think they'll have no trouble, you know, understanding what we're asking for. Yeah. Well, and we're going to meet with them next week. So um, the good news is, is they can tell us who to direct it to so we can put a name on there um, in the salutation. And um, we're also going to have a conversation with them. Um, a little bit about um, our intent with the driveway, um, trying to figure out if our intent changes, does that preclude us from applying for the grant? You want to talk about that? Um, Kathy, when you say we, uh, who, um, or, or they, who, who exactly are you meeting with? Um, the we're meeting with Megan Effen and Ann McCleave. And they're um, both representatives of the State Historical Society. Uh, okay. We did a virtual tour with them a few months ago because um, they didn't feel safe coming in person. Um, next week, they're going to come in person and we're going to repeat the process um, physically in the house. And um, we have a whole list of questions for them um, that we want to get answered that we think will uh, be easier to do in person than um, over the phone or over a Zoom call. Do they sit on on um, the grant 
um, application process? Hey, um, Anne is our rep our regional representative um, for grant applications in the in the Boulder County area. Um, they provide they're perfectly happy to provide advice and counsel on grant applications prior to us submitting them. So um, we're also going to um, make a plan to submit our grant application to them for their review um, so that we can get their advice and counsel prior to actually submitting the grant to them on the 1st of August. So, um, and, and um, Megan Effen is um, kind of over Anne, at least that's our understanding. I think Anne's over Megan, actually. You think so? Yes, yeah. So we're, we're going to get clarification on their actual roles. Uh -huh. um, next week when they're here. Um, I guess my question is, do they sit on the, on the, um, no, they the, do not doing the, the grants so that they can't, they can't help our case any if there's, any I mean, I think they have influence because they're probably, um, more familiar with the grant applications from their particular area than the other people that who sit on the board, but they're actual reviewers are people that aren't necessarily part of the state historical fund organization specifically. They use outside reviewers and we have, we have no idea who those people are and nor will we. Well, it, it, absolutely. But my, my question is, um, I've been involved with um, SCFD grants and, uh, and other things through um, the Boulder County Arts Alliance and have actually reviewed grants. Um, normally they allow certain people within the process mm -hmm. to, that are sitting there. So, so they're, the, they're influencers, but I don't know exactly what that means. The actual approval process is purposely vague. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I wasn't sure if you knew something more. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Just curiosity. You know, and we may have more information next week after we meet with them face to face. Wonderful. Um, so I certainly think they're influencers. They are not voters. Well, yeah, but if yeah. they can influence in, in, in a good way, yay. So the more information they have, the better we are. So. Well, and, and knock on wood, um, we're meeting with Waddle and Dobb tomorrow about the driveway. And we did get a bid from White um, last week, which we really haven't had a chance to review. It's quite lengthy. Um, and it's presented substantially differently from the other bids that we've received. So um, we will sit down um, next week at our regular meeting um, after Megan and Ann leave and review all of the new information. Um, oh, I do have one other piece of information. I spoke to um, planning um, yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought this was muted. I apologize. Um, I spoke with planning yesterday. Um, we do not need permits to repair the driveway. We don't need permits to... Uh, repair the window. Um, we do need a permit to do the tempered glass, but it's only about $100. Um, he said it would be a maximum of $100 and that um, it will ju it just means that we have to have a, an ins a final inspection on the installation of the tempered glass. So um, that does not sound particularly onerous nor expensive. So, um, and if there were any other permits required, um, there would not be any fees affiliated or associated with those because of our relationship with the city. Um, so that's, that's what he told me about that. And then he also recommended that I go talk to um, somebody else in planning about the historic uh, nature of the house and what we were planning on doing. Um, I forget the lady's name. I've got it written down at my desk. And um, she, he felt that she might have some ideas about where else we could apply for a grant. So I'm going to reach out to her probably next week. Fabulous. That's great. That's Do you great. have anything to add, Karen? No, I don't. I, I think what I would just like to know is if everyone's uh, okay with um, the, the letter of intent as drafted, with the exception of, you know, when we learn who we're supposed to address it to, we'll change that. But otherwise, is this acceptable? Yeah. I believe so. It's very concise and to the point and clear and not overly um, cumbersome, which is really great. Um, thank you for all your hard work on this. Um, 
that's that's my thing. So basically what you need or what we need to do is I need to have a motion that we approve the letter of intent as is. Um, well, actually, I think we wait um, until we have um, it completely ready to go. So, this is completely ready to go. It, um, and it's going to be submitted probably before our next meeting. Yeah. Before the next meeting. So yeah. you need to yeah. have a motion yeah. on that. Um, but we need to have a somewhat of a, a motion in the motion statement. It needs to say, um, with the exception of who it's going to be addressed to. with minor changes, with minor changes. Correct. Yeah. Kathy. That way um, you have the ability to um, do what we need to do without any company. If I can get a motion. Oh, sure. with that. <laughs> We're feeling short over here. Uh, oh. <laughs> screen is tipped back and that's it. Here, I'll, I'll make us a little taller. There, there we, we go. Now we're now we're getting tall. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> I never felt tall before. So, so Anne, did I get was it you or uh, uh, I started I didn't know if somebody else wanted to at the same time. I was gonna say I move we accept it as is with minor changes as necessary. Thank you. Can I get a I second? I second it. Okay, can I get um a hands up for all in favor, please? Oh, I don't vote. Yeah. <laughs> I was at a meeting yesterday and I was voting. So I was like... Seeing all hands in favor, and is, <clears throat> there will be none opposed. This has been moved and seconded and, and moved forward. Thank you again, ladies, for all your hard work on this. We, we just think it's phenomenal. I, I personally think it's phenomenal. Thanks. Um, that is the ending of old business. Um, moving right along to um, new business and our COVID update of board, uh, board meetings, uh, clubs, events. Okay, well, I'm, I am gonna try to explain this and Ben can correct me if I'm wrong because it's fairly hard to understand, uh, but we did get a new order from Boulder County last week, which is, I don't know, 10 or 11 pages long and full of whereases and therefores and their twos and their widths and, um, and here for, yeah. It's so really um, clear and easy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very, it's clear as mud. Legally, it's great. Um, the, the good news is that we, if you have nine or fewer people um, for an inside meeting, um, masks are not required and we are not required in any way, nor are they to um, provide proof of vaccination. Um, if they have 10 to 49 individuals, um, again, their masks are not required and they don't have to have proof of vaccination uh, as long as no more than nine of the guests are unvaccinated. Is that, is that right, Ben? I'm reading it right off the sheet, so I'm trying just trying to read it right. If that's happening right. And this is for indoor events only. For yeah, outdoor I, events, I think it interprets as as eighty percent, and then if it's forty nine, no more than nine. So eighty percent, eighty percent is the is the general rule. That's the bogey. And we're trying to, you know, it's. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. The 80% is, is where that stands. So if you use that as your rule of thumb for that mm -hmm. 10 to 49, and that's a, 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 a consent of vaccination, not a, uh, they don't have not to a proof. Us. It's not a proof. Yes. Yeah. They, they have to internally in their own group Ask. verify that 80% of their attendees are vaccinated. Um, so, in, the in the case of our clubs, they're, they're almost 100% vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the leader of the group just needs to say, yes, we are 80% vaccinated and yep. we're good. Yeah, and if they're under nine, then we don't even need that. Right. And most of our clubs, um, with the exception of <clears throat> Twisted Stitchers and maybe the book club, um, are under nine just to begin with. Um, and our bridge club, which has 12, um, they're all vaccinated and have already told me that. So I, th I think all of our clubs are, are good to go and um, they will not have to wear masks. So they were quite excited about being able to come back and not wear a mask. Of course, if they're uncomfortable, they can wear a mask um, to make themselves comfortable. We're not gonna preclude them from that. Um, Jacqueline and I will have to wear a mask because at this point in time, 
um, city employees are required to wear a mask uh, inside at all times if they're with the public and outside if they're within six feet of people in the public. Is that, is that right, Ben? Yeah, that's the current, uh, that's the current guideline. Okay. Uh, so the, the good news is all of our events, uh, all of our outdoor events are a go. And um, we will just have to monitor the number of people inside the house at any given time um, based on the, the rules for capacity and that kind of stuff. So we will probably still require masks inside so we don't have to worry about vaccination status. Well, the, yeah, yeah. As far as masks and the public. So for example, the, any of our, any of our public facilities, like, like the Memorial building or the rec center, uh, masks are required right now by both yeah. the public and staff inside um, under the same rules we've been using all along. Um, the one thing that does change is the numbers, the, the, the way the numbers work does alter um, currently as of next Monday. And uh, Jeff Reasoners actually will be in a meeting with Boulder County today. We hope that they kind of confirm that at least mm -hmm. give the, that's what we expect. We don't expect anything else, but we've seen, we've seen the unexpected many times. Um, and that's, as maybe all of you know, that that's called the clear level that starts on Monday. And there are no restrictions. That's the, that's the rule. Um, okay. And what that, that doesn't count masking. Masking is the one thing that it's a separate, uh, separate order uh, that works on its own. So as far as capacities, we're at normal capacities. Um, the only exception still is, are large events over 500, which do not, will not come into play for us until quite a bit later. Yeah. Well, if that makes uh, muddy sense, there you go. <laughs> well, the good news is my wedding for 100 in August is a go. My wedding for 150 in October is a go. Um, my brides can quit sweating the small stuff. And, um, and we can probably start to have meetings inside again because we've really, um, really kept the, um, like the bridal showers and the little things you know, that are typically in the, the meeting room, um, we'll, we'll be able to start having those again and not giving them all kinds of guidelines that change every 10 minutes. Yeah. So I, I think it's very exciting. I'm so excited to actually see faces and people. Uh, the, the one thing that we haven't been given the okay for is um, in-person meetings for the board. And what I was told by the clerk's office is that we could not do in-person meetings for our board until the council started having in-person meetings. Um, that's what the clerk's office is asking for. Who oh. knows? And I asked when that was gonna happen and they told me they didn't know. I think we'll just float with the new normal, whatever that is. So, um, okay, thank you. I, I, I think it's exciting. Uh, Again, I think it's exciting that we're getting back to a somewhat of a sense, and I'm glad for the brides. That's that's a good thing. I'm glad for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, I'll take it. Um, um, moving on to the art walk update. Um, I again, I want to make sure everybody knew the date changed <clears throat> to September 11th. Um, I'm working on a sponsorship and based on um, level clear, I, I think we can go ahead and, and plan on having artists in the house. Um, we might want to maybe not have quite as many as normal. Yeah, I had a question on that, Kathy. Okay. Um, because, you know, from previous art walks too, I've noticed how people really are enthused about coming through the house. Um, and it, you know, I mean, even though the house is big, there's narrow hallways. So yeah, I don't know about the six feet distancing. It would be hard. Um, is, would it be possible maybe to, um, have the artists on the outside in the yard and that way the people going through the house would only have to tour the house. It'd be easier to manage the crowd. And if we, I don't know if we had those little white, uh, canopy things, maybe if we could have a few artists in the garden, I just thought it might make it easier with whatever restrictions are in place at the time. Um, let me think about that a little bit. 
canopies and extra tables would really drive our costs up. And we've tried very hard to make that a, you know, not a very expensive event for us to do. And my other concern in September is it gets dark or starts to get dark in the garden. So art's not going to show well um, toward the end of the event. Yeah, I decide, I know how in the past, how crowded it can get in the house. And I'm a little concerned about that. That was, so that's why I was thinking if we could move some of it to the outside, it would increase the- I think we could move a little to the outside. I just don't want to take on the expense of moving it all to the outside. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. And then if we, if, and then if we had it only on the inside, I would really suggest we limit it to maybe four artists because that'll, I, right. I think that's a good plan. So uh, with that said, um, I, you know, I, obviously I have a list of artists. If anybody else on the board um, knows anybody you want to recommend, um, please bring that forward to me or Kathy. And um because we don't want to invite everybody. We have to kind of screen it. And then you can tell them that, you know, we're looking for some artists, but don't promise them a spot just at this point. Um, and I, I really would like to at least um, include an invitation to Diane Wood again, because she was signed up for the last one. And, and because of COVID, we had to close that out. If you would like to extend an invitation, or I can, because I know her very well, that would be great. But that's the only... Thing that I would like to put forward because of the last one being canceled. Um, Makes sense. I would yeah. like to Let's hold off on invitations just for a little bit until we know for, you know, get a clean idea of what we're going to do. Yeah, but I, 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 so that's my name. I'm putting She's at the top there. of the list. Thank you. Um, uh, sunset that night is at 7 15, and Art Walk goes until 8 o'clock. Hey. And I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate, as far as regulations, there it's very unlikely there will be any sort of distancing regulations at that point. Oh, now, yeah. that yeah. doesn't mean that we don't want to be prudent to people's sensibilities, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, catering to your public is exactly what we want to do. But as far as the actual regulations, next Monday, six foot is gone. Um, oh, okay. Apparently, yeah. that, that's... That's the deal, and we know a lot of people will not be comfortable with that. But just as far as the actual regulation, so I'll leave I'll leave it at that one. So I, I have another question as it relates to um, Art Walk. Uh, my thought process was to um, invite Doug Brunson and his guys to come play again. Um, that that has really worked out very well for us in the past. The other thing I could do. If we're going to sponsor a musician, we could ask for a musician from Art Walk. But if we do that, we won't have any control over what we get. I love Doug. Any I thoughts? I, I'm all for that. I, their, their music is so enjoyable for, for I everyone. Think, I think that's a great idea, Kathy, honestly. And because of our venue and it being such a special place, I, I think it's better that we have a little more control over over who we choose to allow to be there. Um, it just helps for the overall ambiance of it. And because okay. we, that's my personal opinion, I don't know where everybody else is. Um, so I'm in agreement with Karen on that. Um, All right, so is everybody in agreement that I'm gonna reach out to Doug? Yep. I, I can send him a note and get him on the hook right away. He, he's never said no, they're delighted to have somewhere to play. From the shaking of the heads, I believe that's a that's a go. All right, I will do that. Um, because I have, are we going to be um, kind of monitoring how many people we allow in the house at a time to keep the numbers more in check? Not um, if there's no restrictions. Uh, so honestly, we get a little crowded, but I, I don't think we're crowded to the point where people would be uncomfortable. Okay. It's not Santa crowded. No, it's no, it's, <laughs> it's not. Um, it's 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 pretty. It's really pretty mellow. Um, and certainly, if it got to be too crowded, we could direct people out into the garden for ten minutes and then ask them to come back. I, I think that's something we can think about when we get closer. Okay, sounds like a plan. And I, and I also think if people are uncomfortable in crowded situations, that they're just not going to come. True. You know, or they'll choose to stay outside and just yeah. walk around the garden and read the tour. I don't know. 
Well, that's where my logic of having some of the artists outside is that people would be more relaxed if it's more open and it's definitely more open out there. Well, maybe if we look for artists that are more, more like garden art, like we kind of used to, yeah. um, see if we can find some people who, who that would be a natural place for them to be like with the ironworks that we had at one point or the, um, the garden, um, stakes and stuff like that. Maybe we can find somebody who just fits in that environment and would not be disturbed by, you know, the light going down. Okay. Yep. Does that make sense? And we, and we can certainly get some tables out there. We probably have to rent some linens. Um, I really don't want to provide tents. That, that gets very spendy. Plus the tents would block whatever light there is. <laughs> <clears throat> Again, it's Colorado, flexible with weather. We'll have yep. to figure it out and, and go from there. Um, okay, if there's no other information on our, <coughs> I think we can move, move on. Um, so we're looking at a total of four artists. And um, again, Anne, thank you so much for, for taking this on and, and doing this. Um, on to the women's work uh, scavenger hunt. We haven't had our final um, meeting regarding the event, but um, I do know that we raised around $6,000 for a woman's work. Um, in case you're not aware of what it was, it was uh, a scavenger hunt through a lot of the, uh, around a lot of the areas in downtown Longmont. And um, my daughter, Sarah, was um, the chair and she got me <laughs> as the co-chair, of course, and um, my goal, my first primary goal was to get some history into this. And so, um, Old Mill Park was part of it and, uh, Callahan House and St. Stephen's Plaza and, uh, Roosevelt Park and a lot of other places as well, but we did QR codes. And so when they went to visit the site, the QR code gave them a clue as to the next place they were supposed to go. And they had a little goodie bag and, um, merchants donated various coupons and things like that in the bag. And I was, Kathy was, um, gave me a bunch of brochures on Callahan House. So everyone that got a, a bag had a brochure in hand to tell them more about the, the history and what the house is for now. And uh, the same thing with Old Mill Park and the Historical Society. So I got my mission accomplished by, um, you know, pushing the history of, of uh, Longmont. So um, $6,000 was a good amount of money to raise for having been the first time um, that it's done. And I thank those of you who were involved to help me put it together and, and participated. Uh, Maureen said her and her family participated and they had a good time. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Having fun for a good cause. It was wonderful. So mm -hmm. thanks. Well, we had, after you mentioned it, I started watching and we had little clusters of people out by the gate, you know, deep in conversation, um, having a good time. It was, uh -huh. it was kind of fun. Good, good. I think everybody kind of got to invent their own fun. I mean, we gave them a guideline, but then they could take pictures. They could make it a race like Maureen said her family did. And, um, you know, got competitive. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> really, but, but it, it was, it was great. And and um, speaking with other people that did it, and and I gotta I put I gotta put a um, face to your daughter um, Sarah. It was very nice to meet her finally. And um, anyway, it, it was great fun, and um, I'm sure there were a lot of other people that did it and and went and um, utilized um, restaurants and everything downtown because of it and made it a a big a big thing so so it was, it was it's a great idea and i love the qr codes i they're simple and well yes so <laughs> anyway um moving on uh on to other business at this point unless we have any other new business that we need to bring on to the table um other business um is open and i i already kind of broke uh, the subject approached the subject of um, the QR codes with Sue Ellen. So if, if we can get something hopefully happen with that, that would be great. Um, 
uh, does anybody else Did we just lose audio? You guys all there? It got real quiet. I don't think I can hear Maureen any longer. Um, I can Maureen, see. We, we can't hear you, Maureen. You can't hear me. There you go. Oh, you were froze up for a minute there. Was I froze? I'm so yep. sorry. Like your lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. <laughs> It's like a really bad, um, you, you know how those old films from from Japan where they or, or or China where you're talking and it's not working. Can you hear me still? Hopefully. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything to bring up when it comes to other business? Okay. I, I do have one thing to add about the garden. Um, Anna told me that all of our new perennials are coming up. So those the 63 what? plants we put in in the fall are all all survived the winter. That's Wonderful. Good. I'm I'm sure they'll look beautiful. Um, future oh, agenda items. Does anybody have any future agenda items that they would add on to for us to discuss at the next meeting? I actually do have something that we need to bring up and, and broach. Um, Normally, because we did not meet in January, um, normally we just discuss when, when or if we're going to have cancellations of meetings. And because of I've been on other boards and because of July being July and people take a lot of vacations, is, is it a possibility that we would like to cancel our July meeting because of the holiday? Um, just putting that out there. Um, I don't know where everybody else is out, but normally um, that would have been discussed and set in January. So it, uh, we had public notification way in advance. Um, uh, we can, we can change the cancellations. Well, I was gonna say, I think my only hesitation to canceling July is that that's really right before we're going to be submitting the grant application. I think we're going to need the board's eyes on the final grant application um, for approval. Um, so that's my only hesitation to okay. pull out canceling. If, if we can we move it. Well, it's the, four, it's the 14th. It's really not. Not, not really movable, actually. Never well, it's not. Uh, it doesn't come in right by the, the holiday. Holiday. So. OK. Just, just uh, all right. So then that's completely off the board. And, and again, it's more about um, making sure that we're covering what we're supposed to be covering. All well, right. and if, if we're to a point where we've already gone through it and we're done, then we can certainly discuss canceling it. Um, we, we don't, aren't, we just have to post at least 24 hours before a cancellation okay. uh, that the meeting's been canceled. So we would certainly decide way before then. So I, I think we can um, kind of flow with it and decide what's appropriate as we get a little closer. I just we, hate to only do 24. I'd like to at least to do a week to, if not two weeks out to, for public notification, simply to, to, to say that we're way above board. I don't like anybody thinking that we're doing anything um, that we're not supposed to be. And I know we're not, but, but again, it's all about um, being open and apparent, that's that's kind of my my whole thing. So um, if we had a bunch of visitors to our meetings, I would be very concerned about that. But since we typically don't have a ton of visitors, um, I think a week's notice is, is perfectly appropriate. And on occasion, we have canceled closer than that for various reasons. Um, okay. And typically, we do cancel one of our summer meetings just in, in a normal year. Um, we, we do cancel one of them just because there's no new business, but we'll maybe that will be August. Play it by ear. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is it, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of where, where, where I'm, where I've been in the past where that there's at least one meeting canceled and I, and I just want to put that out there. So, um, all right. Um, seems we have nothing else to, to discuss that I know of. Um, can I, ladies can, can we go and make sure that's the case um, that you have nothing further to discuss? Anne, are you good? Um, Candace, are you good? 
Janet. Okay. And, and Karen, you already brought up the point about the grant. Thank you for doing so. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So we're looking at adjournment. Um, if I can um, get an adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Karen. Can I get it? Can I get a second, please? Somebody second. Um, I, I believe Anne had her hand up first, so we'll go with her. Um, and then um, I'll just make a, um, can all, all in favor of adjournment, hands. There we go. Um, all right. Moved and seconded and uh, full vote. We are- 43 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Efficient. We did it. <laughs> all right. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See you later. Bye. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Aurora.